What's happening guys? Nate here. Today we're talking about the two key mechanisms that separate intermediate and advanced ground strokes. Yeah, we're talking about the forehand and the backhand today. And the reason that we're filming this particular video, we've talked about these two mechanisms a lot, but I want to shine a light on only these two because I've received a lot of video analysis lately. You can submit those through player court. I know it's it, as a member, I know it's a shameless plug, but that's actually how we receive them. But in these video analysis, I have a lot of people, the, the large percentage of people asking why they can't produce power or why they're not producing enough spin. And it has to do with the lag, all right? And the lag and the slot are really these mechanisms. Now, I know you've probably seen a lot of videos. I'm gonna show you uh, on these subjects. I'm gonna show you the best way that you can find this organically. So real quick, just to review what I'm referring to is on the, after the setup, we have our unit turn and from the racket drop, all right, whether we see more of the racket drop on the side or behind you, more WTA behind, both are great. What we wanna make sure that happens is that the racket lags on the forward swing. So what that simply means is that the upper body is uncoiling before the lower body. But it's a byproduct of using the legs. The kinetic chain starts with the legs. So again, forehand or backhand. As I'm taking the racket back and I initiate my movement forward, I wanna make sure as I start to uncoil the upper body, the racket lags, all right? And so when I'm referring to the slot, that just simply means that the butt cap is pointed forward off at an angle. Now to distinguish this, forever it was taught flashlight at the ball, and that's not entirely wrong, but it's, it's, it's just a matter of how we get there. See, the flashlight to the ball in the 70s meant something entirely different than it does today. And that's because it was predicated upon people primarily hitting from a closed stance. So as the flashlight moved to the ball, it happened more in sync with the upper body uncoiling. There was still a little bit of a lag, but not nearly as much as we see today. So today, regardless of open stance or closed stance, what we're seeing is that the racket is dramatically lagging with the slot off to the side before it plays catch up to the ball. So let me show you this fantastic way to practice this and then we'll talk about how to apply it into when you're hitting an actual ball. Okay, so what you're gonna need is a stretchable band. Here's a TheraBand that I got from PT to help with a, a rotator cuff issue. And all you're doing, as long as it can stretch, it could be a bungee cord, you're gonna attach it to the top of your frame. Now start with the racket behind you where it's already tethered to the net post. And here, practice both stances, whether a closed stance or an open stance. I'll go kind of semi-open here. But what I wanna focus on is pushing down through the ground in order to get my upper body to uncoil. And there you can see the racket lags and therefore it also enters the slot. Now, I hear coaches talk a lot about hip thrust. It actually used to be taught. It was something that, you know, I think it was just a way to, to kind of identify the, the, the hip. But I think what you want to focus more instead of the hip is the leg, right? If I'm pushing down through the leg, hip thrust was re referring to like your hip opening, but it doesn't necessarily thrust. I think that terminology might be off. Instead, focus just bending through the ground and uncoiling so both hips are starting to rotate. If I do this correctly, my chest should be forward by the time, not entirely forward, you know, we, we see that occasionally, but predominantly almost at a 45 before the racket starts to come forward. Now this applies to both sides. So if I'm hitting the two-handed backhand, I want the racket to lag here as well. You'll see there, as I start to uncoil, my right hip is uncoiling first, my right shoulder will start to go butt cap is forward. And you'll see the backhand has a tendency to be a little bit more forward as opposed to the forehand that stays a bit off at 45. Although it does, depending on the backhand and the grips on the two-handed backhand, they can, the slot can get a little bit further out. But this is true whether it's a, a two-hander or a one-hander. If I'm setting up on a one-hander, I want to drive and my upper body starts to uncoil and therefore the racket lags. This is just a great tool. I suggest everybody struggling to find power and spin on their shot to use this. All right, so now let's talk about how we apply it to actual hitting and how we can feel it organically without forcing it. So what we wanna focus on now is tension. Tension is the killer, right? Or it doesn't matter what the stroke is, right? The serve, forehand, backhand. 
and eliminating it. And if we really focus on using our legs and driving forward with the legs, as long as we don't have a ton of tension, we should get an organic lag. All right, so here in this exercise, you're gonna remove the bottom two fingers from the stroke and just focus on hitting the forehand and this will help eliminate tension. Cliff Drysdale once said that you should be able to hit your forehand or backhand as if you were sipping tea. So you don't need all the fingers on it, right? It's just about eliminating that tension. So yes, the major difference between an advanced and an intermediate forehand, it's all about this lag, all right? And I know it's not super fun and a lot of players won't take an accessory and work on it, uh, such as the band to the, to the net post, but this is really the best way to feel this lag and start incorporating it in your game. It's too hard sometimes when we're hitting to put focus on this because we're busy sitting and receiving. We're chasing this ball around, moving really fast, and we're tracking. So get out and put that into practice and slowly make sure that it implements into your game until it becomes a fundamental, something that you can rely on, a solid fundamental. Guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button. If you never want to miss a player core video, hit subscribe and check out the comments. We left something special for you where you can check out the player core community absolutely for free. See you next time.